Dear students, hope you are all well. So today we will begin with the chapter in geography. The name of the the name of the chapter is air pressure. Let's move forward. Students, our learning objectives for today will be what is air pressure? Here we are going to discuss about air pressure. We are going to learn about the relationship between altitude of the region and air pressure and also the relationship between the air temperature and air pressure and lastly the horizontal distribution of air pressure. Let's move forward. Students to understand what is air pressure you need to perform this activity. Take a stick from a broom or a paper or plastic straw. Tie a thread at its center and hang it so that it remains horizontal. Then tie two rubber balloons of the same size at the two ends of the stick. See to it that the stick remains horizontal. Now remove one balloon, inflate it and tie it again at its original position. Does the stick remain horizontal? No. The stick goes down on the side of the inflated balloon. This means that air has weight. Air is a mixture of gases. Therefore, like all other matter, it has mass and weight. So from this activity, we understand that air has mass and weight. And all matter that has mass and weight exerts pressure. Therefore, air too exerts pressure. Let's move forward. Now first, let us discuss what is air pressure. The air around you has weight and it presses against everything it touches. That pressure is called atmospheric pressure or air pressure. So now if I say we are continuously under the pressure of air, would you believe me? Most of you will say no. That is because we do not feel the pressure. So it is difficult to believe but it is true we are continuously under the pressure of air. Then why don't we feel it? That is because our body pressure and air pressure in the surrounding balances each other out and so we don't feel it but it is present. Similarly, the air in the atmosphere exerts pressure on the surface of the earth. Due to this air pressure, various phenomena like storms or various natural disasters like storms, precip precipitation etc. occur in the atmosphere. Let's move forward. Now the next is instrument to measure air pressure. Atmospheric pressure is commonly measured with a barometer. You can see a picture of it, right? So this is an instrument with which air pressure is usually measured. Air pressure is measured in units of millibars. So air pressure is measured in units of Milli bars. Let's move forward. Next is, do you know? Students, all things in and on the earth stay earthbound. That means all the things remain on the earth. Because of what? Because of the earth's gravity. This includes air, which is in the gaseous form. Due to the earth's gravity, air is pulled to the earth's surface. 
That is why air pressure is maximum at which place? Air pressure is maximum at sea level. Note that air exerts pressure on everything and everyone including air, including us. It is believed that the weight of the air column on any one's person head amount to 1000 kg. Let's move forward. The next is variations in air pressure. Now, there are variations in air pressure. Air pressure is not uniform on all the places on the earth's surface. That means at some places the pressure is high and at some places it is low. Then the next is air pressure keeps on changing from time to time. This means at a time the pressure of air in a place is high. But some other time the pressure of air at the same place may be low. The altitude of a region temperature of the air and amount of water vapor in the air are some factors which influence the air pressure. Let's move forward. Next is altitude of the region and air pressure. Altitude means height. Now let us see how height of a surface and air pressure are related to each other. So as I told you Air pressure is highest at sea level and decreases with height. That means as you go higher, the air pressure becomes lower. Here, the earth's surface that is in level with sea experiences high air pressure. And as we go up, the pressure of air goes on decreasing. The proportion of dust in the air water vapor, heavy gases, etc. is higher in the air closer to the surface of the earth. All these things that is proportion of dust in the air, water vapor, heavy gases are closer to the surface of the earth. This proportion decreases with increasing altitude. That means as you go higher the proportion of dust particles, water vapor, heavy gases starts decreasing. As the pressure decreases, the amount of oxygen available to breathe also decreases. At very high altitude, atmospheric pressure and available oxygen get so low that people can become sick and even die. That means as you go higher, the oxygen level also becomes less and you can't breathe properly. For example, Mountain climbers use bottled oxygen when they are sent at very high peaks. So the mountain climbers, they use bottled oxygen to get use of the altitude, to get use of the height. They also take time to get used to the altitude. They have to take lots of time to get used to the height because quickly moving from high pressure to low pressure can cause decompression. That means you are on the surface of the earth where there is high pressure. Suddenly you move upwards where there is low pressure. You are not used to it and you fall sick. Can cause decompression sickness. Decompression means injuries caused by a rapid decrease in the pressure. That means when you go high the pressure becomes low and you are not used to it. Right? So, that causes decompression that surrounds you of either air or water. Let's move forward. Next is air temperature and air pressure. Temperature and air pressure are closely related. Let us see how. Wherever the temperature is high, the air pressure is low. Also, Horizontally, the distribution of air pressure is influenced by temperature. Now, here temperature plays an important role. 
to understand the role of temperature first you need to know that the flow of air is from high pressure to low pressure as you can see in the first diagram so the flow of air you can see the arrows the flow of air is first from the high pressure then it the arrow is going downwards then goes to the low pressure okay now when air is heated okay when air is heated it expands it expands becomes lighter and goes up here what happens is due to heat the air masses on the surface heats up that means the land heats up and expands and they start to rise up that is because whenever air masses heat up they become lighter in weight and so they start rising up creating a low pressure at the surface of the earth for example let us take the experiment given in your textbook which is of a flying lantern where well, in the air in the flying lantern gets heated once the candle is lit once the candle is lit only then the air gets heated the hot air expands it expands becomes lighter okay it becomes lighter and it then it starts moving upwards therefore the lantern is also lifted up towards the sky so similarly air masses on the earth surface becomes lighter when the air masses becomes lighter then only it moves upwards and move up creating low pressure next next is cold air is denser and heavy tends to sink down now what happens is when temperature is low okay when the temperature is low the air masses becomes dense which creates high pressure so the surface where air pressure is low a vacuum gets created and therefore high pressure air moves towards low pressure and in this manner the flow of air is from high pressure to low pressure as you seen in those arrows it goes from high pressure then towards the low pressure now students let us now discuss the activity of the flying lantern take a flying lantern and tie an approximately 5 meter long thread to the flying lantern so that you can bring the lantern down whenever required after carefully reading the instructions given on the package of the lantern open it and light the candle placed in it observe what happens after some time bring the lantern down with the help of the thread and put off the candle instructions please follow this instructions very carefully this activity is to be performed under the supervision of your parents and adults now there are some questions after the activity that we will discuss first question is did the flying lantern start ascending immediately after the candle was lit here the answer is no after the candle was lit the air masses in the balloon started heating up it starts heating up slowly after heating up the air masses expanded and became lighter and after that the lantern started flying upwards next question is what would have happened to the flying lantern had the candle got extinguished after the lantern had gone up in the air so the answer is if the candle would have got extinguished that means it would have gone off after the lantern had gone up in the air the lantern would start descending it will come downwards as the air masses in the balloon will start 
to cool off and become denser that means it was hot that's why it was going upwards so if the candle will go off it will automatically come down let's move forward now students let us now have a quick revision of what we learned today firstly we saw what is air pressure the pressure exerted by air on a body is known as air pressure so the air around you has weight and it presses against everything it touches that pressure is called atmospheric pressure or air pressure we also learned that atmospheric pressure is measured with a barometer and air pressure is measured in units of millibars then we learned that air pressure is not uniform on all the places on the earth's surface air pressure keeps on changing from time to time also the altitude of a region temperature of the air and amount of water vapor in the air are the some factors which influence air pressure next we discussed is altitude of the region and air pressure so air pressure is highest where it's highest at sea level and decreases with height the earth surface that is in level with sea experiences high air pressure and as we go up the pressure of the air goes on decreasing the proportion of dust in the air water vapor heavy gases etc is higher where at the surface of the earth this proportion decreases with increasing altitude so the air closer to the surface of the earth is denser and with increasing altitude that is with increasing height the air becomes thinner and therefore the pressure of air is less and from this we concluded that as we go up air pressure comes down next we saw the relationship between air temperature and air pressure and air pressure are closely related wherever the temperature is high the air pressure is low horizontally the distribution of air pressure is influenced by temperature here temperature plays an important role then we also saw the horizontal distribution of air pressure we learned that the flow of air is from high pressure to low pressure the reason behind that is due to the heat the air masses on the surface heats up and it expands and then it starts to rise up that is because whenever air masses heat up they become lighter in weight and so they start rising up this creates a low pressure at the surface of the earth let's move forward that's your homework the first question is at higher altitudes air becomes dash next is the instrument used to measure air pressure is dash and the last question is what are the variations in air pressure that's all for now we will learn the other part of the lesson in the next video thank you for listening children goodbye take care